we all should support um, uh, and that we have a framework on a global scale. So driven by UN uh, probably, yeah, so that we have a common understanding where are the, the borders uh, to, to use AI and where not. We have the pleasure of welcoming Andy to our NGRT Engage podcast. I'm Anwes from the NGRT team, and I also have Jisti from the NGRT team with me. Uh, I'll start with a very brief introduction of NGRT. NGRT is one of the world's uh, most popular and leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform, and it's available across 14 channels. And we have around 25,000 bots, which are created by customers across 186 countries in every possible domain and uh, use case. Ingarty has been recognized as a top platform by Inc.com, TechWorld, TIO, and many others. And we run the Ingarty blog, the video channel, and the podcast, which receives upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And I'll just give a brief introduction of our guest, Andy. Andy is the co-founder, managing partner, and CIO of Swiss Cognitive, the global AI hub, is also the president of the Swiss IT Leadership Forum and the pioneers in global corporate growth strategies and digitalization management roadmap for multi-million dollar global ICT operations. He's a digital enterprise leader and is transforming business strategies, keeping in mind the best interests of shareholders, customers, and employees. Andy, the initiative that you have undertaken to harness AI to augment human intelligence and solve business and societal problems in Switzerland is really impressive. And we thank you for joining us and uh, answering the questions that we're going to pose for you. Thank now, you for having uh, me. Yeah, and would you like to add more about the work that you do so that we get to know about it? No, thanks. A really kind introduction. And thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. So before we start off uh, and get the scoop from Andy himself, uh, I would like to make an announcement that we have something special at the end of the interview. So please keep on till the end. So Andy, let me fire the first question at you. So uh, do you think AI is really at a nascent stage? And what do you expect to see in the future? Um, hi, thanks for the question. And it's... Um... Yeah, everyone would like to see in the crystal uh, um, um, what's the forecast is for AI. Um, maybe we should talk about the near future. Uh, that's probably more likely that we can predict some things. Um, um, the readiness of AI uh, in general from a perspective of technology, I think we are quite far. And now we have to consider that we have also to um, to managing the fears, managing uh, some next steps, for example, explainable AI. Uh, we have also to, to, to organize ourselves how we integrate in our um, common uh, environment and AI solutions. So we have to talk about data um, uh, government, um, uh, governance structure, we have to talk about um, data processing and also infrastructure, how we, how we organize ourselves in the corporates about AR infrastructure in general. So how we use uh, cloud services, especially for large corporates. This is a hassle if you are not ready to use cloud service uh, in, integrated in your architecture you're probably also having some homework to do if it comes to it. So moving on to the next one, uh, you know that uh, the cognitive chatbot, the intelligent chatbot, and automation uh, will change the customer service scenario. Uh, do, would you agree with that? And what's your perspective on how chatbot uh, can be used for enhancing the customer service level? <laughs> Um, in general, I have to say, um, this, um, most of the chatbots out um, in the market are, did not understand well uh, the, the topic and how you can approach with new technology, new opportunities. 
just to replace um, uh, to create as, as what's given from the manual work from the uh, uh, agency uh, it's not what what uh, it'll be a, um, uh, a good way and a way also with growth and um, exceptions from the customer side so I think we have to to really to rethink and to re-engineer and also to think around the corner if it comes to replacement or engagement with um, technology in any customer interaction. So more or less what we have done in the last few years is just to replace um, the man behind or woman behind and uh, think uh, from this direction. But um, if you would like to achieve something really outperformed, then you have to think uh, out of the box. And this, um, all what I can see, uh, all what I can say is, um, it has to be absolutely customer oriented. So more or less, you have to go with your customer in it, in this process and to think really new, to re-engineer this, uh, this interaction. So uh, for example, uh, why we call? call in and then answering. Why we having this not in a constant uh, interaction with our customer. So that he has a friend around himself, um, it's called chatbot, whatever. So we have to, to just to bring something new and this kind of replacement of, um, um, of, of workload, workforces, sorry, workforces, is not what us brings us to the next level. And there is also a probability that um, if we're just replacing that uh, our client are not accepting um, this technology. That really depends on the, on the solution. It depends on, but also on um, which additional service that we have. For example, I'm um, now um, a small and mid-sized manager uh, from a mid-sized company, and I would like to have my my bank, um, especially in the night, if I'm working for the for the supporting uh, uh, workload, that I have access uh, to my bank, uh, or at least I can could ask ask some question. And that's not happening, as you know. And um, so it would be nice to have. Um, something in place that you can really talk to each other and um, having at least some answers uh, and also answers that not generally uh, do you, but then I can also search in a Q&A. Uh, it's really, it's really a match to your uh, personality, to your case, to your accounts, to your processes. So it has to be transactional at that. And that's not uh, so easy to do, as you know. Uh, this transactional based chatbot is something that all their customers out there would like to have it, just to, to have an answer because I ordered some things and, um, and then probably it's around this order and uh, why I call in and not and give all the information till I do uh, the chatbot themselves recognize, oh, that's an order and so on. And so on. Absolutely. Thank you. So moving on to the third question, a uh, lot of startups are doing really interesting and deep uh, research and trying to leverage AI. How do you think the startups uh, can benefit from applying it to the digital world? Um, I mean, in general, um, uh, startups are great for the, for the economy, great for ecosystem. It's a kind of um, extended workbench of all the large corporates in, in terms of having innovation in the ecosystem themselves. So startups is uh, pushing innovation um, at its best. And um, that's just by, by definition. And um, also by definition, it's a, a kind of risky, intervention in the market with, with venture capital. So I think it's very, very important that we have a certain amount of money going in in this venture capital 
risky approach to achieve better solutions for our clients. It doesn't matter which technology it is. So, but it comes to to a digital world now. To startups have even better position in the market because most of the market are globally, and that's something probably we didn't have this 10, 15 years ago. So most of the smallest uh, startups had have now the uh, um, ability to to grow and to establish their business model absolutely global. And this is uh, the combination between this global approach, uh, global market, with technology, and being a part of a pushing in a way, pushy innovation uh, strategy for the whole ecosystem. I think it's absolutely needed that we uh, look to our uh, healthy startup environment. Thank you, Andy. So now, uh, coming to industries which are leveraging AI, in your opinion, which industries are leveraging AI the most and which are the ones which are lagging behind? Well, uh, there are two, um, two different uh, views on this topic. Um, one is that, um, the view of um, what's the market scale in this industry. So it's, um, and there we see market scale in manufacturing, in finance, also in education, especially also with, together with Corona and retail. So this is really market scale, uh, huge market scale. And the other hand is the question about how far we are in this industry. So is there already a penetration of 50% or even higher? And there we see another picture. So for example, uh, with a quite large market scale of smart city, for example, but we are nowhere. Uh, so we could reach there much more because, but it's hard to reach there. There is a reason behind why we are not there. So normally struggling with structure wise, or they're struggling with this market are not ready. Even if it's a market scale here, but uh, there is not ready. So we have to be very careful to look to these different market uh, industries. So for example, manufacturing, I think there are really far far in front in terms of market scale, but also in terms of already done in penetration already. So this, um, and if you look to uh, energy, for example, we are having a large market scale. And there is a nice, nice uh, Deloitte study uh, talking about this uh, topic. And the penetration is, is, is nothing in the energy. Uh, if you're talking about global, there are uh, local heroes and there are local regions that are uh, far, uh, more far to to reach another penetration level. But in general, um, there are uh, other numbers if you look to the global scale. So it's it's absolutely different uh, pictures, and the landscape are uh, also brings more startup, more uh, provider to that the investing in the most likelihood of any potential for the next few years. And that's education, that's manufacturing, that's finance, and um, of course, healthcare. Yeah, thank you, Andy. That was quite insightful. Uh, the next one is quite interesting, I think, for all of us. Uh, so there's a lot of talk about singularity as a concept, where I think machines can start replicating machines and they really can pass the Turing test. Uh, a kind of Skynet, uh, where all the machines are connected and they kind of train and teach each other. So what are your thoughts on this? And uh, we heard that Google says that it will be there in 2028. So do you think that's likely to happen? I don't talk about terminate the sun science fiction. And um, just to clarify, uh, we have now with narrow AI an industry base that we can use 
and we didn't. So we are ready in technology terms uh, to implement, to engineer products and services around us. And we didn't. And the question is really why? Why we are not there? Why are we not using all the technology, even if it is large potential, by all, all the, uh, the reports? So we are always behind the curve if it comes to prediction. Um, and so I'm the man of talking uh, of, uh, I talk about practical uh, AI use cases. And there is just potential in front of us to use it. So we have to aware people, we have to aware market, we have to, to show with the best use cases how to do, how to approach, what's the first step, how can we um, um, be friend, uh, come, becoming friend with AI, with all their concept, technology, and uh, algorithms. So, and then it's some step probably in front of us to, to elaborate and to develop uh, AI to the future. And there is lots of missing part if, um, till we are reaching any singularity. Um, and one missing part is really how to, to navigate um, with this new possibility of any kind of near to singularity technology in terms of ethical question, how we do with society. And um, as I'm not an expert there, I am stop here because um, this has to be clarified. I'm an engineer and I was teach to really to explore and engineer things that I can believe with my heart and what my ethical principles to, um, to to support only uh, solutions in these directions. And this is a whole bunch of questions to our society and general also to uh, technology experts, how we could handle if we would reach once st this step. Thank you so much, Andy. I think that was very uh, insightful and lucid account of uh, what do you think about upon ethical AI and especially the biases that are still out there, which may cause trouble uh, if machines start uh, kind of taking decisions on their own. So thank you for that answer. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I would like to end this by asking for the audience, uh, do you have any other thoughts, any other opinion? Do you want to give a message to the audience? Especially I, I went through your website and I see a lot of articles around uh, and your uh, vision about how you're going to spread the awareness of AI, how you think we can leverage this as a real opportunity and improve uh, the human uh, society, businesses, and the earth as a whole. So I'd like to hear your ending thoughts on that and what message can you give to the audience? Yeah, one important thing that I would like to add here is um, that you um, has best is if you talk about um, uh, what your country, uh, wherever you are, uh, can achieve a certain framework of understanding how we use AI. Because what, my country, because um, there's also a question of legal data protection, data usage, how we how can we use data in a proper way? And as you know, there is difference in the countries to understand also from a culture background. Here in Europe, we have a total other understanding how we should use data and not use data for privacy uh, and others, other uh, culture background as in Asia, for example, or US. So it's really important to understand this also on a country base. And all what you can do there is just opening the participatory um, platform that everyone can engage with this um, topic and you can elaborate your, uh, your own story and journey. The second is, I would like to mention is that we all should support um, uh, and that we have a framework on a global scale. So driven by UN, uh, probably, yeah, so that we have a common understanding where are the, the borders uh, to, to use AI and where not. 
So it's not given uh, by any law or God uh, to, to have this. So we have to elaborate. Otherwise, we would have uh, El Dorado for too many large corporates as we have already with Google, Facebook, and Amazon, and Microsoft. So we, uh, there's no blame about uh, to them, but we have to understand where we like to go to also guide them to the right direction. So AI uh, is here to stay. AI is unstoppable, but uh, if we talk about business and uh, growth in the market for AI, we should be aware that we have to be careful and guide them to the right direction in all the markets that you are, uh, where you are in to establish the best benefit and the best framework tool and uh, all means to our society. That's great, Andy, and thank you so much for spending time with us and giving us your valuable insight, uh, insights and also answering some of the questions that all of us have, but uh, don't really get a clear answer. And uh, thank you for giving us time on this Monday morning. And your insights were really valuable. And I know the audience is going to love this interview. And uh, for the rest of the folks, if you have stuck around for this long, we are excited to announce that we have an ebook called Evolution of Customer Experience, which is out and it will be available for download. And uh, we'll publish the link uh, for you to download that. And uh, we'll be back with a new episode uh, with a brand new expert and uh, get their thoughts and opinions on the most happening things in the world. And uh, so stay tuned to that. And uh, we'll see you around for the next one. Thank you, uh, Andy, and uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate you giving us this time and talking to us. Yeah, have a good time, stay home, stay safe. <laughs>